YouTube, it's Thea, and I'm back with another haul. So this video is going to be my June and my July book haul. I've got a total of 12 books, um, six that I hauled for June and six that I hauled in July. Unplanned, they just happen to work out pretty equally. Um, I'm pretty excited. There are some new releases. There's a couple new releases. There's a lot of backlog titles, um, a couple graphic novels. So I'm really, really excited to dive into all of these things over the next however long it takes to read them. Um, but I'm really excited to add all of them to my collection. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive right in. We will first start with the books that I held in June. I'll go just really quickly kind of go through them. A lot of them are pretty well known, so most people know about them. Um, these aren't in any particular order. This is going to be kind of what I pulled from the, just kind of what I see from the stack. Uh, the stack is A Girl Like That uh, by Tanis Bethina. I honestly don't know much about this. Um, I've just heard really great things and it's a kind of diverse YA contemporary. I'm trying to branch out a little bit more and read some more contemporary. Um, I love this spine. I think this spine is going to be so cute on my shelves and um, I've just heard nothing but great things about it. It. I've heard its own voices. Um, it is a about a 16 year old named Zarina. She's a bright, outspoken student, an orphan, a risk taker. She's also the kind of girl that parents warn their kids to stay away from a troublemaker whose many romances are the subject of endless gossip at school. You don't want to get involved with a girl like that, they say. So how is it that 18-year-old Porsa has only ever had eyes for her? And how do Zarina and Portia? end up dead in a car together on a highway in Saudi Arabia. Oh, shit. When the religious police arrive on the scene, everything everyone thought they knew about Zarina is questioned, and as her story is pieced together, told through multiple perspectives, it becomes clear she was far more than, the, than just a girl like that. I had no idea. Oh, wow. Um, well, I'm super intrigued to read it. I've just heard really great things about it and um, I really liked the cover and so I picked this up but I didn't know that's what it was about so I'm super intrigued um, I'm hoping to get to this really really soon actually now I kind of want to change my plans for August um, but we'll see but I'm really excited to add this to my shelf I ended up getting this at a used bookstore for like two or three dollars so um, and it's in really good condition so I'm really excited bookstore I ended up finding a copy of fangirl for like two dollars um, I used to own a copy of this that I got from book outlet and then I got rid of it when I moved because I got rid of a lot of books um, I wasn't really this wasn't really on my radar to like pick up. I was looking I was gonna like get from the library and um, but I happened to see it for like two dollars and I could not pass it up. I've been wanting to read it forever. Um, I've heard a lot of mixed things about it. I know people either love it or they hate it. Um, I hope I'm in the love category um, because I am a huge fangirl for a lot of things and Harry Potter is like very heavily influenced for this and I'm a huge Harry Potter fan so um, I hope I'm in the love category, but we shall see. I'm hoping to get to this very, very soon. Um, I feel like it's good. It's very much like a summer contemporary, so maybe I'll get to it in August. We shall see. But, and, um, but I'm really excited to have a copy to go back on my shelf. My used bookstore is missing its cover, but I could not pass it up for $3.99, and that is The Name of the Wind. This is the, like, special um, edition. I know that this chunker is, like, new, like, $50. So when I saw it there for, like, $3.99, even though it was missing a cover, I was like, yeah, I'm going to pick this up because I've been really, I, like, really, really want to read this so bad. But I would hate to like buy the like beautiful edition and then not like the book. So I figured this was worth the risk to pick it up for like $3.99, give it a read. If I don't love it, um, then you know, I'm not out a lot of money. And if I do love it, then I can, you know, eventually collect, get the like really nice edition and then pass this along. Um, I know this book is pretty heavily loved on Booktube, but there's also a lot of people who hate this book. So I honestly don't know much about it, what it's actually about. Um, uh, it's just one of those books that's like really, really loved. So I decided it was worth the risk to pick it up. And this thing is massive. It's like 
700 and something pages. So I don't know when I'm going to get to this, but um, I'm really excited. And even though it's missing its cover, I mean, these end pages are still gorgeous. And the spine is still gorgeous. And um, it was worth the risk of picking this up. And then at a different used bookstore, I picked up Blade Dancer by S.L. Veal. I honestly... We, I've never heard of this book. My boyfriend and I had went and we were just like browsing the shelves and we went to the sci-fi and fantasy section and literally just kind of like pulled it off the shelf, read it, we were like, okay, yeah, and then took it home with us. So um, it sounds really interesting. I'm just going to read the back. I'm just going to read the, the, I'm just going to read it for you guys because I'm not going to be able to describe what it's about. Uh, let's see here. Jory is a professional shock ball player, the fastest run back in the game. She has loved across Terra, but Jory has a secret that she's lived with for 24 years. In a xenophobic world that despises aliens, she is not quite human. When her mother dies and her secret is revealed, Jory must honor her mother's last wishes and set, on a, and set out on a journey to find others like herself, those known as the clan children of honor. And once they meet, none of their lives will ever be the same again. For in order to take the vengeance denied their mothers, they must undergo training at the Tana, a school for assassins known as Blade Dancers, the most lethal killers in the galaxy. And in the heart, and in the heart of that school lies a deadly secret and the key to Jory's past. It's, it sounds really interesting. It sounds like something that I feel like I would really like. I've been trying to branch out into more like sci-fi. Um, and if it's really good, you know, there's a lot of, maybe it's something that can spread some love for, you know, some more underrated novels, and, um, it's not super thick, it's only, like, 300 pages, and the font is pretty big, so I don't think it'll take very long to get through, and I'm super intrigued to give it a try. And then the, and then, uh, the last two are graphic novels that we picked up for the month, and that is Raven, Daughter of Darkness, Volume 2 by Marv Wolfman. This is the continuation of the Daughter of Darkness series, so, um, I am... Pretty excited to read this. I know my boyfriend is a huge Raven fan. I really, really like Raven. Um, I haven't loved this series, but I am still really intrigued to give the second volume a try. Um, I do really like the art style in this one as well. And Marv Wolfman is the original creator of Raven. It's always really nice when like the original creators are able to come back and do you know, a modern take on it. So I'm excited to give the second volume a read. Um, I don't know, I don't want to give too much about what this is about since it is a second volume, but basically it follows Raven and as she's kind of discovering herself, um, battling with who her father is. And so I'm excited to give it a read. And then the last graphic novel and the last book for June is Green Lanterns Volume 2, The Phantom Lantern. This is the um, part of the DC Rebirth series that we've been collecting. This is the next volume in the Green Lantern series. The first volume is Rage Planet. Um, read this last year. Really, really enjoyed it. So we were really excited to pick up the second volume and give it a read. It's got some new faces as Green Lantern, some diversity, and um, I really like the art style in this one as well. So I really like the art style in this one as well. So I'm excited to give this a read. And then one of the, and then we've reached the books that I've held for July. These again are in no particular order. It's just going to be kind of what I pull from the stack. Um, we'll start with the new purchases of the month. Like these books were brought, bought at like full price, brand new. The first one being um, uh, the, the Legend of Zelda, The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess Volume Two. This is the manga series that's an adaptation of Twilight Princess. This is the next volume. Um, read Volume One like two years ago, maybe last year. Um, really, really enjoyed it. So I've been wanting to continue on with the series and um, happened to see it at Barnes & Noble, decided to pick it up, um, and this just is the next volume in the Twilight Princess series. And the second book we picked up while at Barnes & Noble is called Dragons of Autumn Twilight. Um, I honestly have no idea what this book is about. It's the first volume in the Dragonlance Chronicle. My boyfriend really wanted to read it and I was like, yeah, it might be something I'm interested in. Um, it's an older fantasy series. It's by 
kind of the team behind Dungeons and Dragons and Wizards of the Coast. If that means anything to anybody out there. Um, I'll just read what this says here. It says, lifelong friends, they went their separate ways. Now they are together again. Though each heart, each, though each holds secrets from the others in his heart. They speak of a world shattered with rumors of war. They speak of tales of strange monsters, creatures of myth, creatures of legend. They do not speak of their secrets. Not then. Not until a chance encounter with a beautiful, sorrowful woman who bears a magical crystal staff draws the companions deeper into the shadows, forever changing their lives and shaping the fate of the world. No one expected them to be heroes, least of all themselves. It sounds like it might be something that I'm interested in. I'm... I've been trying to branch out to some more adult fantasy and some read some underrated things and some things that are older. So this might be something I'm interested in. Um, I wanted to include it in this haul even though it wasn't purchased for myself. Technically it was purchased this month and there might be some people out there who are interested in this. So um, I like the cover. The cover is kind of cool. I mean it's like very like classic fantasy. Um, so I'm excited I might give it a try. And the next thing we picked up is The We Free Man by Terry Pratchett. This is one of his novels in the Discworld series. I did buy this at my used bookstore, but this is actually brand new. Um, we had some credit, so we didn't really have to spend any, like, actual money on it. Um, I really, really like Terry Pratchett. I've been branching out into him a lot more. I've read one novel in the Discworld series, which I really liked, and then Good Omens, which I loved. So I've been wanting to read more of his stuff. And I really like these new additions, so we decided to pick it up. I honestly don't know much about it, uh, but the blurb on the back was like Celtic mythology fused with Buffy the Vampire Slayer. So I was sold. <laughs> that was all I needed. Um, but I honestly don't even really know what this is about. What's not to love about a girl who takes on vicious monsters armed with only a frying pan? Well, that sounds like a lot of fun. Um, I love Terry Pratchett's humor. He's got like that dry British humor that I really, really like. So I think this is going to be a lot of fun to read. There's trouble on the aching farm. Monsters in the river, headless horsemen in the lane, and Tiffany Aching's little brother has been stolen by the Queen of Fairies. Getting him back will require all of Tiffany's strength and determination, as well as a sturdy skillet. And the help of the rowdy clan of fighting, stealing, tiny blue-skinned pigs pixies known as the we free men uh this is gonna be a lot of fun um actually this isn't within the disc world it's a tiffany aching adventure i don't know if it's like a sub series within the disc world or if this is like a completely different series that he did um but i'm still really excited to read it um we also picked up the big sleep by raymond chandler this is another one for my boyfriend but i decided to include it in this haul um this is a pretty old book i honestly don't know when this was 1939 so it's definitely older my boyfriend tends to read a lot more like older works um i honestly don't really know what this is about raymond chandler's first novel published in 1939 introduces us to Philip Marlowe, a 38-year-old private detective moving through the steamy side of Los Angeles in the 1930s. The case involves a paralyzed California millionaire, two psychotic daughters, blackmail, and murder. So it sounds like it's going to be like a, it sounds like it's like a kind of mystery, a kind of like a crime mystery novel. I might give it a read. Um, it's only like 220 pages, so it might be something that I pick up. I've been trying to branch out a lot more, um, pick up some novels that he really likes as well, so this might be something that I, that I pick up and give a read. I also have my book of the month choice for the month, which I'm so excited to be back. I took a little bit of a three month break from book of the month because my stack was getting a little overwhelmed. I was getting a little overwhelmed with my stack of unread book of the month books. Um, and I was needing to save a little bit of money, so I took a little break, but I am back. And the choice for July I chose was Three Women. Um, this is actually a nonfiction novel, which I don't read as much as I would like to, uh, but I've heard good things about it. I've heard that it's like super feminist, and it says here, Desire as we've never seen it before. A riveting true story about the sex lives of three American women based on nearly a decade of reporting. Uh, we begin in suburb, suburban India with Lina, a homemaker and mother of two whose marriage after a decade has lost his passion. Uh, North Dakota, we meet Maggie, a 17-year-old high school student who finds a confidant in her 
handsome married English teacher. And then finally, in, in an inclusive enclave of the, nor of the Northeast, we meet Sloan, a gorgeous, successful, and refined restaurant owner who is happily married to a man who likes to watch her have sex with other men and women. Um, so clearly we follow three very different kind of women, um, and I'm really excited to, uh, to read it. I've heard really great things about it. I've heard it's just super feminist and just kind of normalizes women and sex. And so I'm really excited to give it a read. Last book for July is a brand new July release, and that is Teen Titans Raven by Cami Garcia. Cami uh, Garcia is the writer of the Beautiful Creatures series, and um, with us really liking Raven, um, we wanted to pick this up. And this is a graphic novel, but it's almost kind of like manga style graphic novel. Um, and it's just like really adorable. The illustrations are really, really cute, and it follows it follows Raven in high school, and um, when a tragic and it just follows Raven when she's in high school at seventeen. And I've heard really good things about it so far, so I am really excited to give this a read everything that I've hauled over the last two months. Let me know in the comments below what you guys have hauled recently, if you've read any of these, any thoughts, comments, and opinions about them. If you'd like a full review on any, anything, um, as always, if you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to hit subscribe to get notified of when I post new videos. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you're well. Happy reading, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.